bouldering area with my kids the other day and somebody came hiking through with a bluetooth speaker right of course oh, yeah. because that's what hikers that's what oh, hikers yeah. do yeah. right they gotta gotta have your tunes but first time ever it was a good song it was oh, good <laughs> <laughs> the gambler really do you know the gambler yeah. <laughs> you gotta know when to hold them yeah, Kenny Rogers. No wind to fold them. That's right. <laughs> no wind to walk away. No wind to run. No wind to take your here. This your is... ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I thought I'd I thought I'd uh, to wait just just set this episode up with with the answer to to. Answer One of the answers what ails to you? the question that I that I'm going to ask you. So yeah, are you? Gonna the sing question it to is, Cormac. I'm not going to sing it to you. But uh, this, this is a this is a great old. Yeah. Just hit my microphone. This is my old Martin 0017. This is this is like a 1938 guitar. It's really, really old. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. My uh, Super cool. daughter. She went on this path, I don't know, about a year or so ago. Her, her brother uh, went to went thrifting and found her a actually full-size Casio keyboard. And oh, nice. she's never played, you know, before in her life. <laughs> Do you remember that episode of Friends where Ross had the, the little Casio key- <laughs> <Yes>. keyboard? <laughs> that was yeah. so good. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, how many Casios in our lives have we had, and how much joy have, right. has that that company brought? I mean, yeah. it's just incredible. So, but she. So, so what did she do with it? Did she? Uh, uh, did she? She's taught herself how to play, and uh, it's amazing <sighs> because females females are incredible. Well, what's people. amazing about Jeez. it is is that our, you know, our bedroom is basically slightly or right over hers. And, mm-hmm. you know, you'll hear her playing Beatles, Imperial Death Which you March. don't like. What What do you do when she plays the... Do you pound on the floor? Stop that infernal Stop. racket! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to go to hell. I'm sure that's what, what the parents I, before I, I, the Beatles I mean, said to here's everyone. Here's the thing, too. She's like, I don't really know how to read music. So she basically writes everything. She's got, like, all of the letters out on the keyboards. Yeah. And yeah. she writes it all out in the letters of the key. And that's how she taught herself how to play. And, and it's yeah, actually nice. sounds good. I'm like, and so. <laughs> you say that, you sound so surprised. Well, I mean, for somebody who. <laughs> well, you are. On some I <laughs> am. I mean, but for somebody who has never played before to basically just teach herself how to play. Right. And so yesterday she that's went cool. down to the basement and. There's the kind of the stack of her brother's guitars. And she's like, you know what? I'm taking this one upstairs. I'm going to learn to play the guitar. Absolutely <laughs> sure you'll be able to play the guitar. Nice. That's awesome. Well, I, uh, I think that there's never been a better time to learn how to play an instrument than there is now because True. there is just instruction everywhere, right? Well, you know, it, it, <laughs> it goes back to... The one time that we were on stage at the Builders Convention in San... What was it called? Construct? Construct, thank you. I think. Yeah. And someone had asked you, you know, what is one of the best tools out there for architecture? Productivity tools. Productivity tools. Productivity tools. Yeah, yeah. And what did you say? said YouTube. And, and that was, this was a long time ago. Yeah. Right? This was when, when there was like, l- YouTube was literally not allowed on the network in our office. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> that's, that's when that comment was made. And so where has she learned how to play the piano? Where has she learned, is going to apparently learn how to play the guitar? YouTube. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it's just, because it's, it's a free option. Yeah. And it is amazing. All right. Well, I have a question for you. What is the last thing that you did? Kind of creeping over my microphone here. What's the last thing that you did where you seriously lost track of time? And this could go in a good way or it could go in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's stick with a good way. <laughs> I, I think there's 
I think in a way there's both. So we'll, we'll keep it positive. Yeah, we'll keep it positive. You know, wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't least, it be, let's start there. Yeah. Let's start there at least. I will honestly say, because you had kind of precursored this a little bit, so I had been thinking about it. Good, good. And I thought I'd get a better answer if I did, so that's why. <laughs> and, and it's that creation moment, whether it's the early stages, and, and I was specifically thinking architecturally, and I was specifically thinking mm -hmm. about the, the birth of an idea in concept where you immerse yourself just blindly in the production of an idea that, you know, that somebody gave you and, and I'll give you a good example. So I, you know, we, we've talked about the uh, Hopkins project that I've got in Baltimore and how, mm -hmm. you know, we're working on, you know, several different tenant fit outs and one of them, I don't know this is guarded secret or, but one of them is a wellness clinic. And, and it's not your, like the average, what pops into your head on this clinic. There's, it's, it's a lot more, and there's a lot more science behind the specific spaces that they're asking for. And I, I have never done any of this, never done it before. In fact, you know, some of these spaces I'd never heard of before. Yeah. And <laughs> about a day and a half later, I'm feeling like, you know, it, and it was just immerse myself in research, immerse myself in understanding the space, immerse myself in understanding what it is they're asking me to do. And, you know, that's the gift that I think architects have is trying to immerse themselves in the understanding of how, you know, what the space is, how the space is going to be used, how they're particularly going to be using the spaces. And, and, you know, I just jumped it, leaped in. And, you know, like the research portion of it, the, you know, trying to look at each of these individual spaces, you know, down to the minutia of like, you know, okay, if this is a single occupant space and I need accessibility around a particular piece of equipment within that space, and I have to, you know, start thinking about that, but then, then I've seen their, their existing spaces and their and they're completely different from kind of like the analytical approach to, you know, the way that I'm looking at each of these spaces and I just get buried into it. And then like a day and a half later, I'm like, oh, this is like, it's, you know, it's Thursday. Yeah. It was just like, wait, <laughs> and, 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 and honestly, when, when we started working on this and, you know, I'm, I'm not alone. I mean, there's you know, a team and the team, you know, immerse themselves in this as well. But it's everybody was just kind of like, you know, just dove into this to try to really understand some of the spaces. So, but it was just like, we sort of forgot time for a little while. I like how you framed it as the act of creation, yeah. because there, there's this, there's the analytical side of it, right? Which you mentioned it toward the end there where it's like you're diving deep into it. Maybe there's code implications. Maybe there's, yeah. there's occupancies, there's fire, there's exiting. There's, there, there are those things. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and I mean, you kind of have to take it all in and, and, but it's all under the framework of we're going to, we don't know how to do this. We haven't done this before. Right. Um, in the, exactly this way. I mean, everybody knows this, who's in architecture. It's not a math problem. It's not right. Like this is not a what a tame problem, another way to say it. Like there's tame problems and wicked problems. Mm -hmm. And wicked problems have no clear path right. on how you're gonna get to the final result. And architecture is a wicked problem. Like these projects are, you have no for the most part, you yeah. have no clue how you're gonna get from here to there. You don't even know where there is. Right. And right. and so you're you're and but you're comfortable in that place. And that I think is what is a very successful outcome of what going to architecture school is about. Yeah. It's about problem solving. It's not about knowing the problem mm -hmm. and then solving it, but it is like figuring it out as you go. Right, right. Obviously there's there's all kinds of things that push up against that. Like how much time do you actually get to spend to True. do that? What are your skills? How much resources do you have at your fingertips? Uh, what, there's uh, a lot of things. What other that, projects are you working? 
What other deadlines what, yeah, what do you else have is going there? on? What, what yeah. other responsibilities in your life do you have? How, do you have, how many yeah, meetings yeah. do you have? That could have been an email. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 but I think, you know, framing it as the act of creation is is a great way to do it. And then just kind of this insatiable curiosity mm-hmm. to figure something out. I mean, it is kind of interesting that, you know, we t- we call ourselves licensed or registered architects, but we're really licensed or registered problem solvers, right. or at least we're up for the challenge. We may or may not be successful, like solving kind of imp- implies sure. success, but uh, it's not always successful, right? And through failure, you learn as well, right? Mm-hmm. And that's part of the process. And I, I just think it's it's very interesting. And the reason I bring that up is that like licensed or registered problem solvers or, you know, we're willing to take on any challenges because we really are literally willing to take on any challenge. The, ans- the solution does not need to be a building. Right. We're just wired in a certain way where we're curious and interested to figure something out. Mm-hmm. And what is crazy is how much information is available nowadays to do that, oh, yeah. where yeah. you actually don't need to have a mentor or somebody sitting right next to you who has done it before anymore. Like you brought up the example of your daughter learning to play the keyboard, right? Sure. It's like you you can go out and find that information and it's it's really accessible. And that's the democratization of these tools and it's gotten rid of many gatekeepers who have existed in the past where th- people having that knowledge, architects included, was like a very exclusive thing. And now yeah. we're seeing less and less of that. All right, that's getting those walls are getting torn down uh, as we speak in in many different ways. Right. Right. So I was thinking back to about this question before I even asked you about it and I thought what were the things and and I mean there's there's so many variations of this that I can think back to. Like there there there's just pure distraction as well mm-hmm. where you just completely lose track of time right you oh, could sure. you could be on youtube you could be scrolling on instagram it could be something where it's just like whoa where did that hour go or the 20 minutes go yeah. i had no idea but but you really did kind of take the question how i meant it which was like where w- where did you get so deep into something that you absolutely lost track of your surroundings like your this your sense of time what i mean by that is just like where did you go what rabbit hole did you fall down and i was thinking back to various ways i could answer that question through different things and and oftentimes it comes through learning or making and so you talked about it as the act of creation and i think this is right in line with that because i think about building models when i was in school yeah and literally <laughs> building models or dra- or sitting at the drafting table and drawing. And you're not drawing because you know what you're drawing. You're drawing to figure out what you're going to draw, sure. you know, and yeah. you're building a model to figure out your project. You're not building a final thing. You're building a study model, which is a, a tool that you're using to help you get from here to there. Right. And I think that's another interesting thing about the act of creation is a lot of times we have to build a tool to make a thing mm-hmm. or we have to do five studies to figure out which direction we're going to go. And and I find that to be really satisfying. And I look back on these losing track of time situations very positively, even though there are other people in the world who will look at those and say, that's a complete waste of time. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. And because because everything is figured out, what do you mean you have to figure it out? Like it's already figured out. You just have to draw draw up the blueprints, right? When somebody comes and just wants you to draw up the blueprints, oh, yeah. it's like that's not even that's <laughs> that's that's not how I think, right? No. So um I think about like even early computing, I think about like learning how to write code. How do you write a web page? How do you write HTML? And it was like it, it was endless. It was an endless pursuit. Yeah when I was learning how to do that. I mean, and that could be said for basically any area of study, right? It could be architecture, it could be bio- biology, it could be physics, it could be nutrition, it could be anything. And and there's an endless amount of information that you could consume, but you you kind of align your passion and your curiosity with this thing. And that's to me where we get in the zone or, or flow state where you, lo- you actually lose track of time. And, and design 
is one of those places. And that that's the architectural one on yeah. my list. It's just designing a project. It's well, You have a certain amount of time to design a project. You are penalized for spending, quote unquote, too much time designing a project. Yeah. And that is an endless black hole oh, that yeah. you could go out, yeah. go down, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I will say that there was another, you know, um, in my opinion, easier way to answer that question. And it's something that I know for absolute certain you have experienced this is any and all automotive endeavor, mostly, oh, yeah. you know, hey, I'm going to, you know, change my brakes and rotors. <laughs> How yeah. long could that possibly how take? How long could that possibly yeah. take? It's just like, how <laughs> many times out. have I done this before? <laughs> Why is this bolt not coming off? Yeah. Right. It's just, how am I going to apply the right amount of leverage to get this bolt off? Exactly. What, and, and, it, and it becomes solving a problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, becomes, it becomes this thing where you, there's a lot of curse words and you're trying to figure it out. And, you, and you're, you're not just trying to do the job. You're trying to figure out how to do the job. So... Here's something interesting, and I don't know where this is going other than on a tangent, but, you know, I was working with my son, showing him how to change brakes. Really, it was just brake pads at the time, not rotors or anything like that. And we were trying to, you know, get some leverage on uh, on one of the bolts. It wasn't wasn't working. So I went and I, gra- I was looking around. I was looking at the, the ratchet that I had in my hand. Looking at it, it was a. You're like, looking around just like in the scrap pile. No, right? I, was, that, that, I, I looked kinda, around. Kind of what it, you do. <laughs> so I, I looked over and I saw the handle, the removable handle for my floor jack. And yes, I've used that I'm many like, times for, wait, for to slip over a wrench. Exactly. Yeah. And so what I ended up doing <laughs> yeah. was at first I looked at the at the crimped end and I'm like, well, you know, I could grab a, you know, a screwdriver, you know, jam it in there and basically like, you know, tap it to open it up. I'm like, no, no, wait. And I just basically cut the um, end of the plastic handle off. Perfect, perfect round size, slid over it, slid over the handle perfectly on the ratchet. And there was my leverage. And my son looked at me, it was just like, how did you know to do that? Like, Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just, yeah. Yeah. You know, it was something that was, you know, I knew I needed leverage. I knew I needed to yeah. find something to provide that leverage. And this was it. And the only way for it to work you, was... You blew his mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was just like, <laughs> I wouldn't have even thought of that. And it's right. just like, I wouldn't have even thought of it either until I did it. And I did it. And boom. Yeah. Yeah. A floor jack handle is a great thing to have around. It, this is the reason why you, we don't throw things away, no. right? No, 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 <laughs> you no, no, never no. know yeah. when you're going to, when you're going to need them. This is why the garage is full of crap because you might need it mm-hmm. someday. <laughs> well, absolutely. There's uh yeah, that's, that's a great example. I, I love that example. I've used open end or not the open end, the closed end of like a box wrench oh, yeah. to do the same thing. You kind of slip that yeah. over something oh, yeah. and, and it may not be a straight so lever. It's, it's, it's still it, a it lever. like this. Yes. You just push exactly. it down. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've but it still works. That. Especially yeah. when you get into those little <laughs> awkward spaces in the wheel well or something like that, you don't have the space for, you know, the, the you know, yeah. floor jack handle. You need that box right. end, right? You know, the closed right. end. <laughs> it, you know, it just, like that one, you know, honestly, is the time suck of all time sucks is yeah. working on your vehicles because you don't know what you don't know. You don't know how long it's going to take. You, of course, already know that. You're not an expert. When you're yeah. looking for your 10 millimeter suck, it, you're not going to find it. Like everything, yeah. it's everything. In, it's in the cross member under the radiator. Everything labeled yeah. 10 millimeters is <laughs> for some reason not there. It's gone. You know? yeah. and, and you can't, you know, it's... <laughs> It's not the next size up. It's not the next size down. It is exactly 10 millimeters. Isn't that a 716? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the reason I had this, this instrument out is this, is this is where this has been a huge time suck for me over the years. Yeah. It's just sitting and playing guitar or bass for a very long time. And... There was a time in my life where I thought that's what I was going to do, right? It was just I thought I was going to be a musician and that I was going to play music and write music and record music and play music and sell music. And um, 
put a lot of hours into that. And I, it was something that I still look back on as like one of the coolest things I've ever done, like making yeah. music, playing in front of people, two people, having fans, hearing it on the radio, those kinds of things. It was just like still something that I'm extremely proud of. Like I texted you the other day. I was like listening to the to, to our my band's album yeah. as I was driving. And I don't do that very often, but when I do, I'm just like, damn. Well, this you, was fun. That was good. You know that we're fans. My daughter absolutely we, loves your the the Phelan household yeah, yeah. and <laughs> some of them. and you you had posted a photograph of a sunrise, and you had used the title of of one of the songs from the band, right. and of course everybody's like, "Ooh, beautiful picture! Ooh, beautiful this!" I knew exactly. I was like, "I know." Yeah. <laughs> I know that song. song. And then, of course, <laughs> immediately, what, what did I do? And played that song. Did you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and over, nice. and over. And, and, my, and then, then we had, uh, my daughter and I had a conversation about that song. And she was like, you know, I wasn't really sure what I actually thought about that song because of the way it you know, kind of like starts a little slow. But she goes, you know what? It's actually become one of my favorite songs. Hmm. Yeah. It, I would love to know why. I I feel the same way, but I feel like they're all my children, right? So True. that's one different thing between obviously me and and somebody else who's coming at it from a, a different perspective. And I like them all for very different reasons, mm -hmm. right? It's just yeah. just like actually having kids. It's like they're very different from each other, and the yeah. songs are very different from each other. And I like them for different reasons. Yeah, I mean, I even started like you had to have known I was listening because I was. Yeah, I started like shooting you off questions it's just like he he oh yeah was just like, <laughs> he joined the army in june what you know what june what year what this and you were like what i'm like it's a metaphor it's yeah. a metaphor oh man <laughs> i was connecting because i joined the army in june uh i see yeah I mean that that was that was one of the things that I th just feel like it it was it would be fun to talk about and and today now what are the things that you lose track of time over I again keep, let's keep it positive here because I don't want the answer to be email right <laughs> <laughs> Well honest what do I lose track of time over currently yeah. It's the start of Formula 1 season man New epi new season of uh, um, net new episodes are out. Well, it is of the of the latest drama. Well, of of <laughs> Netflix's Drive to Survive, their little okay. uh, you know, episodic recap of the previous season and all of the drama there. And so it was one of those. It's just like, would so you like you you like can, can you can you like what what do they call that now? Where you just splurge and watch all the episodes? Oh, yeah, can they I, do I, that, or I, are they releasing I, no, them? They, are they releasing them? They released them all at one time, and of course, you know, binged them. And I was just like binge, I, That's and the I was word. and I was looking at the time, and I'm like, okay, I need to sleep, but I also want to watch. <laughs> you know, like I got to know what just one like, more. But, but the next more. episode's about Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> They're going to... You, know, <laughs> you got to know about that. I got to know. <laughs> so, you know. Right. And, and so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I... And, and see, actually, that's interesting. It's just like, it is easy for anyone to really just kind of like fall into that rabbit hole of binging. You know, just as like, you know, and then the next thing you know, you're just like, all right, I done. Like, Silo, I didn't watch silo when it first came out so all of the episodes were released i still haven't and i still haven't gotten into that one but oh, I, I know it's good it is very good and and i just like burned right through it. the thing that i found so amazingly enjoyable about it is not only just the you know the the storyline of the the sci-fi start of it part of it but also the architectural side you know the setting mm -hmm. um this very in the silo oh yeah because it was y you can tell that it was a Portman-esque building or at least inspired by because I got very, I got the vibes of the, like the Renaissance Center in downtown Detroit. You know, th mm -hmm. that's what it mm -hmm. felt like that the, the set of that. And, and so I was just, I was more captivated. It's equally captivated. Let's just say equally captivated by the architecture of the set 
as much as I was with the storyline, which the storyline was great. It, it, it's, it's an interesting concept, but and I'm not going to give it away. So you need to go and watch it someday right. so that we could I guess know, I, chat about it. I guess I will. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny that you and I tend to tell each other, oh, you need to watch this or, oh, you need to watch that. And every time we do that, there's always some form of visual impact, architectural impact that is part, mm -hmm. is, is as much of the storytelling as anything else, like Tales from the Loop. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've, if you've watched that or not. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh and, yeah. And, and I, we I, I just that. recently rewatched it, you know, because, you know, it's, you've got this kind of like, you know, mid-century modern vibe, you've got this, you know, futurist vibe, you've got all of these things that are equally as part of the story as the story. And yeah. without without the entourage of the architecture, I don't know if the story would have the same kind of impact. Severance has kind of a vibe similar to that, yeah. right? Where it's kind of dreary and kind of liminal spaces. And I mean, it is interesting how much yeah. the architecture as a character yes uh, in yeah. in some of these right and where it the, the place that they're in is another part of the of the story mm -hmm. it plays a character it plays a role yeah. i think that is that is pretty interesting yeah. yeah yeah absolutely right because the the stale kind of like office setting of severance and as as the disconnect from from like reality from your your daily life and then you go to your daily life and it's got a completely different vibe a completely different feel completely different architecture uh yeah I, I, yeah not sure you know well go ahead sorry my flow state thing recently i think has just been riding my bike i mean i am super fortunate to and one of the reasons we decided to move here that was like one of my must-haves on my my list was mountain bike trails mm -hmm. and the trails here are just uh, incredible and and uh i've had the opportunity even through the winter i mean it's just been a really mild winter yeah. up to this point uh we're supposed to start getting snow basically cool. today but um it's been and they've done a bunch of trail work lately too and it's just been insanely good where these trails are like something that you would normally if if you went to a, an actual ski resort during the summertime that they ran mountain bikes on they're that quality where it's like you would nice. spend 80 bucks to go ride these <laughs> and and they're just free they're just right right down the street and um it's just been one of those things where you get into a state and i mean i all i can do is is describe it as flow state and the flow state yeah. is like where you completely are in control and out of control and it's totally fine at the same time right it's like i'm literally going you know 25 miles an hour down a very steep rocky rooty dirt loose you know trail and it's perfect it is perfection yeah and it's like a lot of people would hear that and, and they they would just hear that and be like, no way, yeah. there's no way. And for me, it's like, I want to go faster, right? And and things are bouncing around and, and back and forth and forwards and backwards and slipping and underneath you. But there's like a certain level of disconnection with the bike. It's like, you're not, you're not locked to it, mm -hmm. right? It's just this dance between me and the bike and the trail. And yeah. It is, it is literally the flow state. You, you do lose track of time. Beca and I think it, what's so interesting about it to me is that it's, it, it is like a meditation, which is you are so focused. You are so focused on what's actually happening. And I think this is what happens in the, in the creation state as well. You are so focused and your brain is working so hard. Like when it's over, you are exhausted. Mm -hmm. Right. You are just completely exhausted. Yeah. I, I've had podcast episodes like that. I've had episodes like that with you. Like after the conversation, it's like I need to go lay down. Like <laughs> the it's it's just yeah. like my brain is done for the day. Like I'm cooked. Yeah. Right. And and I look back at what was just accomplished or or whatever, you know, and it's just like, wow, that was really cool. And I think that is such an interesting outcome. Yeah. 
of something that is so challenging and so difficult. And and really great conversations can do that to people. A really great ride on a bike can do that. A re- like li- watching a really great movie, listening to a really great piece of music, right? right. And there's, there's, there's different ways to connect to these things. And it's that connection, I think, that draws me to this question. Right? It's like, what, how do you get into that flow state more often is, is like what I want to know, right? right <laughs> and true. I know there's, there's a lot of research and there's a lot of books about this. Um, and, and also, like, not everybody's wired the same. And so not only are they not going to get into a flow state doing the same things, but they might look at somebody else's thing and be like, that's terrible. Why would anybody do that? Exactly. You know. Yeah. So I, I think it's really it's really interesting how personal that is as well. But I think that's what connects you is that's what char- charges each person differently. You know. I mean, right. whereas you know, I could definitely say you know, hey kids, let's go and do this, and they're like, boring, don't want to do it. Yeah. And you know, my wife and I are like, man, this is the greatest thing. I mean. I don't, I, <laughs> Don't know how. Simple pleasures. Yeah. <laughs> don't know how or why, but, you know, I mean, we get a kick out of, like, going, it's going to sound lame, I guess, but, you know, antique. And mm-hmm. we don't really ever go there for. The thrill of the find. Well, the, it's the, not even. It's like treasure hunting. It's treasure hunting. But <laughs> to me, I sit th- I sit back and we'll go through these these places. And, it, and you know, there's, there's a. a bunch of different states. You do sound old, I will say. There's a bunch of different states of of mind when I'm walking through (laughs) there. Some of them are like, and and I think you'll remember when I was like just sending you photograph after photograph after photograph of the Star Wars toys. Saying, ooh, I had this. I was was already thinking that like, no, but the antiques I'm looking for are cool. That's what. (laughs) Yeah. And, And so I was just like, ooh, I had this. Ooh, I had that. And, you know, and so there's like the connection between what they're selling and, you know, my own shared memories of, of those toys. And then there's others where, you know, you'll see like maybe, you know, some Victorian photographs or, or, or like these, these old postcards that people have written. And you wonder, I wonder about the story behind them. You know, there's, there, here's a photograph of somebody that there's no name on the photograph. There's no inscription on the back or anything like that. Who was this person? What was their story? Right. And why was their story mm-hmm. lost through time? And then you look at the stuff and you, you look at, it's like, wow, humans collect so much stuff that this is how it ends <laughs> up. Like we go yeah. through this, this time of life that we collect things that we enjoy you know, it's like I showed you this one time, but I mean, like, you know, I've got a thousand and one collections of field notes. Oh, yeah. You know, we got to do that episode. We, we do. But Jeez. I mean, Cormac showing off his collection of field but notes. But it's like, tell us in the comments if you want to see that episode. It, it, please do. Because <laughs> I will, I will completely nerd out on, on my, <laughs> my field notes. But I mean, it's just like, yeah. what's going to happen when I move on? to either the unused collection or the used collection that, you know, I just use to remember things, to jot down thoughts and ideas. Hey, let's sketch out a, I don't know, a ceiling detail or, or, or something like that. And, you know, so I'll Mm -hmm. have all of these notebooks of, of thoughts and ideas that will go into the ether. So you walk through there and and I'm always wondering, or I apply my own story to the things that I see. It's like, you know, sure. oh, you know, it could be that like somebody decided to set up a living room as their display for, you know, their, their set. And it may be like these pieces came from a bunch of different people, but I'm picturing one family and this is their, their dining room or this is their living room. And, you know, what is the story behind that? You know, where's the, but it just, to me, I think the, the history or the sh- her- shared history that I look at and see, you know, it's just like, oh, that person was a freak, you know, those kind of like all sorts of things. It just, it's <laughs> like, it's so enjoyable to think about the history of humans through just. And that's look- a huge time suck, right? Oh, oh like my when you're gosh, wandering yes. those, yes. those stores full of stuff. That right? is a huge time suck. <laughs> I mean, 
You know, you're basically prospecting at that point, right? You're sometimes you're picking oh, yeah. through yeah. the smallest details. Sometimes, sometimes. when you know, and, my, it, and it's also overwhelming. Oh yeah, there's so yeah, much yeah. stuff. There's, it's like I can't even focus because there's too much. Exactly. Stuff. I mean, I, you know, we'll, sometimes we'll take my daughter. We'll like, you know, come in with us. We're like, no, we're like, all right, we'll we'll just be a, cute, a couple of minutes. She's like, mm-hmm, sure. She knows, mm-hmm. and then yeah. like, you know, six two hours, <laughs> and then you got the SpongeBob. Uh, six hours later, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but the whole time, I'm like, you know, sending her. Not a big fan of clowns, and I always take these like, you know, really creepy pictures up. You know, because there's always, you know, those yeah, those like, you clowns. know, 1960s, 1950s like clown dolls and stuff. They don't look yeah. like jolly happy clowns they're always they're not fun clowns no and so of course you know i have to take that like really artsy portrait mode shot that looks you know that that i kind of like shine the light on to make sure it looks really extra creepy and then send it to my daughter she's like yep no thanks nice are you sure you don't want me to get this for you (laughs) yeah she'll definitely want to go with you next time i'm sure because of that absolutely Yeah, it's funny that there's like these just moments that you can have and you're not setting out to do that. You're not setting out to lose track of time. Yeah. But but at the same time, you there's a high likelihood that that's going to happen mm-hmm. because you've done it before. Yeah. Right. And I think I think, you know, bringing it back to where you even began, where you were talking about her learning to play the keyboard. What I think is so interesting about getting into a flow state is like and, and just the the attacking a challenge or or doing problem solving or or whatever however you want to frame it you don't even have to be qualified to do it right right i think that is a super interesting thing about it and not only that but you don't even have to be qualified to do it and be successful at doing it right. like obviously we're talking about a huge range of possibility here but it doesn't stop you i mean and i think that's what's so cool because i there's a lot of people who have self-doubt yeah. and imposter syndrome and they can't do something because and it's like i can't and there's these excuses and i won't and i can't and i didn't and right. i should have and i could have and i would have but i didn't and and it's like i think that's what makes and I, I i'm not really saying this like to put us on a pedestal but that's what makes us and us is like the people wired like this different yeah. the people who are are interested in challenges yeah. uh and who have that motivation, that intrinsic motivation, you don't, because I think rarely it's externally motivated or, right? It's not extrinsic motivation, typically. Right, it's like, right. to get into that flow state, it's like, and like, there's some people who can do that, right? Because they've shown up for 10 years writing or drawing or painting mm-hmm. or whatever, so that when the time comes and somebody commissions them to do a thing, they can actually just do it right. and get into that flow state at will but to get there you have to you have to find it from within you have to intrinsically motivate yourself (laughs) like like to get into that place and i think that takes really good habits and and you have to figure out yourself so that you can get yourself into that state and I, i i always see that with my youngest it's like he, he'll make some excuse of why he couldn't do something or why he did it incorrectly or, or whatever. And I'm like, okay, now you know that about yourself, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Now you know that about yourself. So what are you going to do about that? Because you just turned 18 and like you're responsible, right? So next time, now what did you learn from that? And I think that applies to whoever you are. It's like if if you're interested in getting into the flow state, for example, and, and finding something that you could lose track of time in doing how can what can you do to remove the barriers that you have to get into that place one of the things that i tell my sons um as you know two young adults uh i tell my daughter this as well but i think she's she seems to be more suited to saying yeah i i, I understand go that. ahead and say it well it's it's no say it just say it She's way smarter than she's them. way smart. Yeah. <laughs> Not saying she's my favorite, you know, but you know, whatever. <laughs> but you know, I, I I talk to them about the the fear that they have of failing when they do something mm, keeps them back from it, doing it keeps something. Keeps them back from doing things, and you know, you try yeah. to explain to them that you know, I, I I've, I've said this before, but and I absolutely love this one little 
uh, thing, you know, this little cartoon that my dad had sitting on top of his computer. It was like the only job that you start from the top is well digging. And, mm. you know, I, I was always telling them that, you know, the, the, the point of that is, is that you, you, you're never, if you've never done something before. And, and, and I talk about this a lot with our, our new architects, our emerging professionals that if I ask you to do something and you don't know how to do it, and I don't take the time to teach you how to do it, you're going to, you know, if you go away and you try it and you try it and you try it and you try it, you know, you'll either stumble on yes, success or, or failure. And I'm, I'm going somewhere with this, um, a little bit later, hopefully I'll be able to bring it home. But, you know, I, I tell, I'll buckle my seatbelt. You know, I, I, I tell, I'm good. I tell my son something like, it's okay to fail. You have to accept and make peace with that failure is a part of learning. And in fact, you know, we've talked about that failure has helped me grow more as an architect than my successes. Because yeah, I, yeah, I've tried things and in fact, I, I just recently, you know, visited an old project of mine and I loved the process. We've talked about, you know, the, you know, some of these projects like the and Annapolis Elementary School is what I just recently visited. And I look at it and there are some really amateurish, dumb things that I did design wise that, you know, I tried. It, it was okay. It wasn't the greatest, but it was things that I tried and I, and I, tr and I wasn't afraid to not try them. And then today I was, we were looking for some example photographs to put into a presentation and I was looking at, and I always open up our, you know, our server, our asset server, um, where we've got all of our photographs of all of the different projects, you know, whether they're construction pro, you know, photos or professional photography. And I was looking at this one detail and I, I, I took a screenshot of it and sent it to the, the guy that I was working with on this presentation. And I was just like, you know, this detail goes unheralded. So like, this is actually, honestly, one of my most, I, I won't say perfect details, but it was damn good. It was like, <laughs> it was unheralded. And it was, un, it was unheralded. <laughs> and, and I was like, <laughs> I tried and I failed miserably at, at a bunch of different types of this. And I just kept trying and I just tried to refine it, keep getting better, keep doing it keep doing it over and over again, building habits to learn about how, you know, the material goes together until I got to a point where I'm actually like, oh, wow, I actually know what I'm doing. And this actually turned out great. And I tried to tell that to both, you know, our, our new, you know, our new interns and my sons that, you know, it's so like, try it. You may fail. You may fail miserably, but try Permission it. to fail, sir. Yeah. But yeah. try it. Build a habit. <laughs> You know, build a habit of continuing to try, to be inquisitive, to keep pushing your your own uncomfortableness. And you'll get to either a state where you're like, you know, it's this flow state where it becomes something that you just lose yourself in. You lose yourself in the time. You just enjoy the process of discovery and making. And now, like, you know, honestly, that, that particular detail, that my unheralded detail that I was talking about, opened up an, a facet of thinking for me of like really getting into the minutia of the details, but understanding the constructability aspect to be able to deliver mm -hmm. really good, kind of like really pristine, kind of like, dang, somebody really thought this through kind of details. And, you know, I mean, I, I can say that, you know, what, 25 years plus into the career where, you know, I just, you know, tried and failed, tried and failed, failed and tried and, you know, got better. And I, I may say fail, you know, and it was a successful project, you know, it doesn't leak, you know, those kind of things, but it wasn't what I was hoping for. It but was of the time. It was of the time. And your, and your it level was, of experience. It was of the time, yeah. it was of the experience. But what it, what it did was it forced me to keep learning, to keep hungering for that discovery. And that I think is where I can get into my flow state 
is, you know, that always hunger for discovery for, you know, that, that detail that, you know, the design, the, you know, like I always talk about it, the continuous line, how that line kind of like carries through things and, and what does that do and, and all of that other thing. And, and, and so, you know, when I talk to my boys, I'm always telling them, it's like, you know, you may not, it's like, you may have this interest and you have absolutely no skill in that interest, but you have that interest. That's the nugget of desire to start kind of like building the hunger to, to see the, exactly to seek. Exactly. I think, uh, you reminded me of one of my favorite quotes by Steve jobs. And it's so simple. I think, I think it started with him, but I could be wrong. Internet can fact check me <laughs> on this one and let me know. But the, the, it's very simple. Stay hungry, yeah. stay foolish. Yeah. And the stay foolish part is really applicable to what you're saying, right? Because like there's this hunger to progress and to challenge and to do and to try. Uh, and the foolish part is interesting, right? Because it does imply you're doing it wrong or you could be, you could do it wrong. You could fail. Um, and you could be trying to do it a different way than somebody has ever done before, and therefore, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. And we, and I think, I think when I think about your boys who don't want to try something because they might fail, is that failure is such a heavy, heavy word, yeah. right? Yeah. It's so heavy for them to think that the possible outcome of trying the thing that I might be interested in trying, I don't even know yet, right. is failure mm -hmm. and it's gonna it's like it reminds me of those old movies where it's like it's gonna go on your permanent record right in <laughs> yeah. elementary school yeah like this is going on your permanent record and it's like nobody cares right nobody cares and the whole idea of failure is there's this weird perception that we have as individuals that is that everybody's looking at me mm. when the fact is everybody's actually just looking at themselves yeah. they don't care about you and we can't shake that right right we can't shake it we always feel like imposters and guess what everybody feels like that oh, yeah, yeah. right there's this there's this this thing we can't shake which is that everybody's watching me all the time and it's because you're watching you all the time and you're putting that on them and it's not true it's not how it works right. and that's a hard lesson to learn and i i mean i know we all struggle i struggle with that oh, yeah. it's just one of those things where it's like yeah i don't want to fail either but at the same time, that fear of failure keeps you from even trying something or from starting something, oh, yeah. and that's yeah. not a good place to be. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it it stifles people's growth. It stifles people's desire to learn more because they're like, well, you know, what if I fail? What, if, you know, what are people going to think? Honestly, most of the time, if if, you know, people are being honest with themselves. They're like, eh, at least they tried, you know, at least yeah. they tried. And, but we can, that's more than what most people exactly. would do. <laughs> but we can never convince ourselves <laughs> that trying is as much of success as actually being successful at something. Right. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah, you can never be successful at something if you never try it. But if you try it, yeah. you're one step closer to success than you were five minutes ago before you tried that thing i'm i'm probably one of i'm probably one of the only 49 year olds at the climbing gym you know like i go to the climbing gym it's a bunch of kids yeah. it's a bunch of kids and college age kids you know they're still kids right yeah and i nobody says anything to me about my age ever and i don't know if they even think about it right but i i notice yeah. it because i'm the one who's the outlier on the scale in the in the gym and it's like, it is, it is exactly what you just said. It is just, I'll, I cannot climb as well as they can. Like they can do incredible stuff with their bodies. Like they're so strong. These, these kids are incredibly strong. I'm not that strong, but I can do pretty, pretty good stuff. I can climb pretty hard climbs yeah. and it's just because I go and try yeah. and I try yeah. hard. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that I do feel good about that. But I'm doing it because I want to stay mobile. Like I want to still be able to do this stuff in my old age. And and I think there was this one talk that I listened to 
that was really impactful, and it was by Sam Harris, and he's he's got a, a fantastic podcast and a, and a meditation app. But something that he has, he has a lecture recorded. I'll see if I can find it for the show notes. But he just it's called the last time. <clears throat> You never know when the last time that you're going to do something is. Mm-hmm. You never know. Right. And it's like, when's the last time you went skiing? And it's like, I didn't know the last time I went skiing was the last time I was ever going to go skiing. Like, you just don't know when that's going to be. And I think that's really interesting, right? It's like, it be, and, and we live our lives looking at the things we want to do or could do, but don't for one reason or another. Sure. And you'll never even have a first time right. because you there's so many things you filter out and you say, that's not possible. I can't do that. I won't do that. It, you totally could. I guess there are no rules. Like and that's another <laughs> another Steve Jobsism. Yeah. It's like when you realize that the world is made out of people no smarter than you are, oh, yeah. like you're in pretty good you're in pretty good shape, right? <laughs> I mean <laughs> luck, opportunity, perseverance. You know, when you like, okay, mm-hmm. but look at them, they're a billionaire. It's just like, are they, are they that much smarter than you? Are they, you, they just perseverance, kept trying, tried something. Played the game. You know, played game, yeah. you know, like played the game. But I mean, it was like, you know, they had, they had this notion of, you know what? No one's ever done that. Let me try it. And yeah. they're like, Ooh, look, he tried it. It didn't exist. Now it does. And this is the whole like they stole my idea fallacy, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. They stole my, they did that thing that was my idea. It's like the idea is the easy part, yeah. man. <laughs> do do the thing. Exactly. Don't just talk about the thing. Exactly. Don't just have the idea in your own brain and keep it there and maybe write it down in your field notes, right? Yeah. And store it on a shelf. It's like no, do the thing. That felt Go personal. out and actually do it. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> 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 that's the hard part and that's what you're looking at that's what you're seeing when you look at that billionaire right it's like they actually did the thing they did the thing that you just talked yeah. about yeah that all this all this fits together anyway that was fun that was a good conversation yeah. <laughs> all right but, you, know, uh, you can prompt me with something don't next like time. you know besmirch the field notes I- I've got, I don't have field notes, but I have a field book right here. <laughs> I have a knockoff, knockoff. field notes. <laughs> Maybe you can send me a case, an extra case of field no, notes. No, I don't share. <laughs> I knew it. You know, I had it, That's I had it, it's, you know, everyone's going to ask, ooh, I'll buy that. I, you know who would like that? Evan would like that. Evan ain't ever getting it. I'll buy that. Evan would like that. I'll, I'll buy that. I'll buy that for Evan. <laughs> And then Evan never gets it because of like, yeah, I don't know. That's really cool. I like yeah. it. This is the same reason you never got your coffee from Kurt and yeah. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> oh, you did. I did end up getting it, it because of, of the guilt <laughs> that I continuously yeah. kept applying to him. That's a reference to our shared episode with the Coffee Sketch Architect podcast guys who said they were going to send us coffee because their podcast is about coffee and sketching. Yeah. And they just never sent it until until they finally did. Well, so. I mean, you you've enjoyed a good steaming cup of uh, the coffee sketch podcast uh, coffee brand, right? No, no. Oh yeah, I never that's got any. right. Because <laughs> they failed you. <laughs> they failed me, <laughs> Kurt. If you're listening, yeah, you failed Evan. Uh, I'm hurt, Kurt. I'm hurt. <laughs>